Hi everyone, this video is a bit of an addendum to my previous video of reviewing BM786 True RMS Digital Multimeter. So if you haven't seen that video, you, you should really see that one first. I'm just going to put the link on the screen and then the description below as well. And uh, thanks a lot for people um, mentioning some of the uh, missed spots in the comments and some additional information. And I think that they were very useful, really. Kudos for that. And um, let me share this new information with you. So um, one of them is about the probes. I really, really like these probes and I mentioned that in my previous video as well. And uh, there is nothing wrong with them except uh, there's something missing there. Can you spot what is missing in there? The grooves, the grooves are missing. And I haven't noticed that. Um, somehow I totally didn't notice that. So if you look at the a cheap probe from you know any multimeter there is like this little groove here and um now i know that it doesn't exist it bothers me before previously i was a happier person uh, but what does this what is this groove used for so let's see let's say you're measuring a a resistor like this and then um what that groove helps you with is just the probe sits in the wire and i i, I don't know i can't focus it in the camera but you can just get the groove in there and it helps to, you can get the contact and then you can get some sort of tactile feeling that you, you you know that your probe is locked in there and then with the other probe you can do other measurements so with these ones you don't have that so if you're not looking you might just slide and go away or something like that so it's not as easy to to you know just lock one of your probes somewhere and then go do measurements with the other probe but the other thing is that if you are working the telephone wires and you know you can just wound them around this this groove and then that will just you know hold them nicely in place well you can do the same thing with the banana adapters that you can screw on these things but um if you're in the field those little banana adapters screwing them unscrewing them can be really tedious so um yeah it's just still not as versatile as the um grooves on a classic multimeter probe i guess aside from that i was like i was just talking about the electric field detection with the probes yeah, you can definitely use the probes for electric field detection but not both of them uh, only the common probe uh, for um contact detection so you have to you have to contact common probe with a neutral or live you know just some wires with some um, current on them and then it detects the electric field well the, on the good news front i just learned something it's quite a useful hack actually when you're measuring temperature you know you don't need to connect the temperature probe for that the thermocouple for that and you just short the probes and then the multimeter gives you an internal temperature reading i think this is quite handy that's um it's brilliant really i, I really like because i can think of a couple of situations that this could be useful a reading of the um, internal temperature that's pretty good and um the other thing about the thermocouple is that somebody mentioned it's probably a bkp60 and it really looks like it so if it's um i'm just assuming it's a bkp60 i haven't tested the ranges myself yet but um i'm just gonna do some tests with it uh so it's rated for minus 20 degrees to plus 250 degrees celsius Okay, I'm just going to test and like um, mention in the comments as well. I didn't find the opportunity yet, but um, there is also that one. So um, I came across a, also in addition to that, I came across an interesting video by Dave recently. I'll just link that Dave's video down in the description as well. So uh, if you remember the um, pins behind the battery compartment, uh, they are apparently, as we have guessed, it's for uh, firmware updates. But the bad news is you can't update the firmware on this multimeter by yourself. So it's not for end users to update the firmware. Um, and uh, the firmware updates doesn't change the calibration or anything like that. It's possibly doable. Um, but um, yeah, you just need to hack it and it's not hacked yet. And when it comes to hacking firmware on a multimeter, it opens a whole bunch of other questions, like especially if you are using this in the field work, which you, you could, this multimeter is very suitable for field work, really. And it's really great. Um, but then, yeah, it's just, you know, tampering with firmware for something that you can use in the field. 
Uh, that opens a whole bunch of other questions. Uh, but yeah, so far there is no way to, uh, as far as I know, there is no way to hack the firmware on this one. Um, but one thing you can do is just check the firmware version, you just press the delta button. And this is just uh, Dave is showing this in his video really. And then you turn your multimeter on, uh, wait a little bit, uh, keep the delta button pressed and you see your firmware version. Um, but again, per day's video, I think I have a recent one, which is great. Um, so this firmware update is only for resellers, so they can um, mass update the firmwares if they have some so they, or their existing stock. So that's not for end users. But yeah, if someone hacks it, I would be interested to see um, what are the possibilities with that one. So that's pretty much it. Um, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions, problems in the comments. See you next time. Bye.